Hi, hello, welcome back, Alexandrian Codex. <laughs> Parts of Iron 4, I still almost said Fallout 4, I don't know why. My brain's just not wired right today. Uh, playing Kaiserreich Mod as the United States of America, we, through the loyal leadership of Floyd Olsen, i.e. new, uh... Oh my god, who... Who is the old president in the last version of Kaiserreich that you could avoid the Civil War with? Wow, okay. It sh shows I'm not a true Kaiserreich fan. He was he was vice president under Hoover. He was, he was part Native American. His name started with a C. Doesn't matter. Basically, the way you avoid the Civil War is exactly the same, except you form the United uh, National Unity Party. It's a coalition between the Rep Republicans and Democrats, but... Curtis. Curtis. That was his name. So, I was interested in that. It's not a huge change, but I think it's it's a notable one, showing that you have to make a compromise between the Republicans and Democrats to keep things together, rather than just, like, electing a Democrat and the Republican being the wrong choice. Yeah. Uh, we're doing fine. Just popping up puppet after puppet after puppet down here in Central America as... They keep on getting events to attack each other, and I'm in a position to intervene. Early on, we tried to intervene in the legation cities, as that turned to the, uh... Triads, but Japan beat us to the punch, and that is now serving as a great beachhead for their invasion of China. Maritime Commission. The Merchant Marine was severely damaged during the war that never happened, and Congress has approved the extension of veteran benefits to those active duty sailors who are not on tour if they became a Merchant Marine in their downtime. We get some more naval dockyards, which are actually great. As far as Navy goes, we've been focusing on a super heavy Navy, dreadnoughts, battleships, and cruisers. And that does have some vulnerabilities, particularly against aircraft, but I hate micromanaging aircraft carriers. Destroyers are just a waste of manpower because people die too often on them. It, like, how badass are dreadnoughts, right? How can I not? Politically, we're still in pretty bad shape. We have 1% stability, and this is the best it's been in a long time. War support's only as high as it is because of world tension. Our party popularity is abysmal. Our political power is still hundreds in the red. Once we wrap up the Fair Deal Tree and we get rid of the uh, National Recovery Act and our economy is back to normal, we'll switch over to this tree, which will give us a bunch of political power, which will really help boost us up and get ready to defend America or start talking about our policies overseas with the Monroe Doctrine. But we need at least 60% for support to get to that point, and that is a ways down the road. For now, we're just building up our infrastructure. <laughs> industry and infrastructure to get us on vague war footing. Now we we should be safe so long as Japan doesn't attack the Philippines. The Philippines are our puppet, so it's it would make me rather uncomfortable if it were to happen. Our our navy can probably intervene, their army's already pretty tied up, but with this horrible political power I'm not into it. The Socialist Republic of Ukraine has joined the Entente. It's joined the Entente, not the Third International. What? The fuck? Why would you join... The Entente? This is no faction. I... what? 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 Yeah, I have no idea what happened there. Um... The United Mexican States joined the Entente? Are you... Excuse you? <laughs> oh, I guess they are social democrats. They're not even, um, they're not even syndicalists. How about that? I didn't realize they went down, uh, social democrats. So you... You may not attack me at all. Given that we don't have the civil war. Well, okay. Weird. Not bad, not bad, just unexpected. I really did expect Mexico to be quite a problem. Uh, I think South America is probably going to be our problem child in the long run, given how runaway Argentina is. 
if we are trying to establish hegemony over Central, South, and North America. And come on, we're playing as the United States. Of course we are. Of course we are. But Spain is still consolidating. Hopefully they'll join the Reichs Pact, but we'll see what happens. And well, for Germany's sake, you gotta hope they join the Reichs Pact. For our sake, I guess it really doesn't matter. Well, floating airfield, we're just gonna keep improving. Dreadnought organization, organization, yeah. Dreadnought organization, dreadnoughts organization. Yeah, okay, that's that's a bug. <laughs> If that stacks twice, that's very good. That's stupidly good. Our finest hour, British politician and former Lord of the Admiralty, Winston Churchill, has published a new book, part of an emerging genre known as alternate history, concerning the Great War. The story takes the perspective of a young British soldier returning from a victorious Gallipoli campaign amid a world radically different from her own. In this timeline, Theodore Roosevelt and his Bull Moose Party win the 1912 American presidential elections, leading to an American entry into the Velt Creek in an Entente victory. A defeated and partially occupied Germany is gripped in, by contrast by constant economic and political crises, witnesses the defeat of the Whites in the Russian Civil War, and is occupied by a bitter and extremely nationalist Adam Dressler. He leads the German Workers' Party who follow the ideology... ideology ideology of people's socialism, an extreme version of national populism. The novel ends with the beginning of a three-sided war between Dressler's New Reich, the Western Entente, led by the dominant British Empire, hey, hi. and Soviet Russia, led by Sergei Kirov. The book has divided critics, with some praising its attention to detail, while others criticize it for its large flaws and historical logic. Churchill has commented, saying, something like this could have happened in another universe. Childish fantasies. This, this Churchill doesn't know what he's on about. And finally, we can get revitalized economy. As the gross metric, the domestic product rises and the American standard of living rises and even exceeds pre-war, that never happened, levels, we come to understand the true goals of Hoover. His efforts, along with so many others, to create a fair deal was a paradigm shift in how our economy interacts within a capitalist system. We'll finally get rid of National Recovery Act. Oh, it's really not hurting us that much right now. And we'll be free to move on to the Democracy Prevails tree and sorting out our, <laughs> our political troubles, which are many. They're not as overwhelming as they were at the beginning of the war, but they're they're still needing addressing. Plot down lots and more factories. Building up strong civilian factories will let us transition to pumping out tons and tons of military factories once the time comes. Jesus, this has 19 available factory slots. That's insane. So seven, eight, nine, ten. That's fucking crazy. This says 10, 4, 5, nope, that's, that's it. 5, there we go. This would be 5, 6, 4, 7. That goes up to 7, that's right. But 3, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. This can go up one more, that's good, that's good, that's good. Uh, this can go up 1... Yeah, let's, let's call it 9, just have it go up to 9. This can go up two more. Okay, yep. Your unrequited love of Mubot. The sad tale. Mubot is a is a fickle lover. Hates everyone, really. <laughs> <laughs> no spamming allowed. <laughs> just, just watching the chat change from ball and sell and ball and sell and ball and sell and to message deleted, just going all the way up. It's good shit. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, that's pretty cathartic to watch. Just, just a wash of message deleted spam going up the page. Yeah, Mubot hates everyone. That's okay, that's what it's here for. Okay, um, we can hopefully build some more fucking artillery. I, I, I haven't shifted over to making more military factories, which I know puts us at some slight disadvantage. I'm not unaware of the complications that arise from that decision. Can I really supply 24 soldiers here? Sure can, boss! Okay. Restoration of democracy in Australasia. The Australasian Confederation has been under authoritarian rule of Governor William Birdwood since the British invocation of the emergency protocols in 1924. We already read all of this. Birdwood, Birdwood finally relented the calls for an open election, leading to John Carter's Labour Party achieving a small, uh, slim majority in Parliament after radicals in the party associated with the Australasian Council of Trade Unions failed to take over the Labour Party. Subsequently, having been ejected, Curtin is expected to have a tough time ahead with renewed Labour unrest and pressure from hardline members of Parliament to immediately suppress syndicalist activism. Nuke time? Yeah, I mean, we're... <laughs> if Japan attacks the Philippines and we get dragged in, it may be nuke time. Kurdistan has joined the Cairo Pact. Alright. Weird, but alright. Ireland still stands alone. Defiant and strong. Yeah, I played as Australasia trying to go, uh, syndicalist. Uh, New Zealand gets all uppity and calls in the Entente to ruin your fun. Australasian Guard coup. War with Brazil's over. Shocking news from the Australasian Confederation is Australasian Guard, a group of right-wing authoritarians who have long criticized the Australasian government for not going far enough in its suppression of syndicalism, and who lost in the recent electoral bid by a fair margin, have seized control of the government. Led by Field Marshal Thomas Blaney, Blaney, really? The new government immediately promised that Australasian Confederation would do whatever necessary to stamp out syndicalism within Australasia. Blaney also stated Australasia would dictate, dedicate itself fully to the Entente Alliance as a proud and loyal member of the British Empire. Demonstrations have already broken out across the nation, and thus Australasia faces an uncertain and likely unstable future. Brazil is now not a puppet. Not a puppet, you just have a truce with Argentina. What the hell? Huh, okay, that was a long war for just Uruguay. I expected Argentina to puppet Brazil, but I suppose there was a white peace event or something that happened there. Revitalize economy, hell yeah, we're done with that. Okay, what do I need most pressingly? War support, weekly stability gain? Uh, that'd be pretty good. A stability gain that would sort out some things. New Day in America, popular democracy, stability, 20th Amendment is interesting. Uh, yeah, let's restore confidence. Congress has encouraged the president to send out a mass media move in collaboration with the Republican, Democrat, and Progressive parties to dispel any misconceptions that individual states can secede from the Union. Only the most conservative Democrats, the AFP, and the SPA refuse to participate. What's a 20th Amendment? I never took civics class! Amendment, the 20th Amendment! The 20th Amendment was made in... Oh, oh okay. Night. It was revised in 1992. Uh, 20th Amendment is... Move the beginning and ending of term of president and vice president from March 4th to January 20th, and the members of Congress from March 4th to January 3rd. Also has provisions that determine what's to be done when there's no president elect. Section 1. The terms of president and vice president shall end at noon on the 20th day of January, and the terms of senators and representatives at noon on the 3rd day of January of the years in which the terms would have ended if this article had not been ratified, and the terms of their secession shall begin. Section 2. Congress shall assemble at least once in every year, once in every year? Jesus Christ, that's it? And such meetings shall begin at noon on the third day of January, unless they shall by law appoint a different day. 
If at the time fixed for the beginning of the term of president, president-elect shall have died, the vice president shall become president. If a president shall not have been chosen before the time fixed before the beginning of its term, or the president shall have failed to qualify, then the vice president shall act as president until a president shall have qualified. Congress may by law provide for the case wherein neither a president nor vice president-elect shall have qualified, declaring then who shall act as president, or the manner in which one shall be elected, and such a person shall act accordingly until a president or vice president shall have qualified. Section 4. The Congress may, by law, provide for the case of death of any of the persons for whom the House of Representatives may choose a president whenever the right course of choice have devolved upon them, and for the case of death of any of the persons from whom the Senate may choose a vice president whenever the right of choice shall devolve upon them. Okay. Section 5. Sections 1 and 2 shall take effect on the 15th day of October following the ratification of this article. Section 6. The article shall be inoperative unless it has been ratified as an amendment to the Constitution by legislations of three-fourths of several states within seven years from its state of submission. It looks like it's just what happens if the president dies. Term limits, it, it's doesn't sound like it's term limits. It sounds like it's uh, changes when people enter or exit office from a prior date to a new date, and it makes it clear that if a president elect dies, the vice president elect then becomes the president elect. Rather than it just going to no one. So the Fencian government has declared Warren Ching being or fighting a two front war. They already have a hard time. Oh, the Sino Coalition. That's cool. Never seen that before. You're still going to lose. China's going to fall in the co-prosperity sphere. Yunnan Quick has joined in. I, it, it, I still don't think it's going to make a big difference. I'm surprised by Mongolia in this game. They really haven't been very aggressive. Hey, sir. I'm not complaining. I'm just surprised. So maybe I don't need to be worrying about all y'all. Costa Rica, I don't know what to think of. They're social conservatives, so they're not attacking anyone yet. Panama, I'm not sure. Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador. Is it? South America is completely outside of my sphere of influence right now. We're going to have to deal with that. But it's going to be a while before we can deal with that. It's so weird to have states in South America that I can't get rid of. I could give this to Belize, or, uh, to the uh, West Indies Federation, but nah. Nah? I'm gonna hold on to my weird Central American colonies? Ooh. The Princely Federation's been fighting this war for a long time. I don't think it's going to end anytime soon. Italy still hasn't fallen. It looks like there's no fighting on this front. Which is amazing considering that Austria's really got to outnumber them, right? 1939. Yep, it is 1939. So that tech, that tech. Do I care about this? No. I don't really care about these right now. I care more about this. Better artillery is something we can put into use immediately. No! No! Ireland, no! What? Who did this to you, Ireland? I mean, it says Ireland is the controller, but like, who, who this? I don't recognize that color. Oh, the, the Italians? I guess so. We are all Americans. No matter whether you're white, black, brown, Red banner, black banner in your hearts, we are all Americans. Congress has generously decided to honor the brave Americans that stood firm against rebels, even when their own parties. Even within their own parties, with the new civilian medal. We gain a little bit of stability. <laughs> Almost double our stability. It's hilarious. I'm assuming the, uh, the 20th Amendment. might uh, be where our vice president takes over. God 
political power would be so nice. They, I haven't changed any of our laws, any of our ministers, our companies, our military staff. God, that would be nice. <laughs> Please. Please, game. Let me, let me change it. You know, the long decline of our political power was entirely in my own hands, but... Seems like, uh, it'd be nice to turn that around. The Kingdom of Siam has completely overrun into China. Singapore is the last holdout of the Deutsch Ostasian. Japan's taken over the, uh, holdings here in Indonesia. The end of the Coalition Party, and it would happen eventually. With the crisis of 1936 well and truly over, the election of 1940 occurring the next year, the Coalition ticket has dissolved by making way for progressives, Republicans, and Democrats to resume their normal political campaigns. Boyd Olson has announced he will not be seeking re-election, which has allowed speculation to float around as to whom should replace the man who saved America. Olson, no. Floyd, baby. Floyd, no. So currently we are Republicans. I'm gonna be going Progressive Party, if I'm being real. <laughs> That's Floyd Olson, so you're gonna be president whether you like it or not, Floyd. Gerald Smith. Nicaragua has cancelled our land lease. The outrage. Russia has annexed Turkish Turkish God damn it. Turkestan Khanate? That yeah, Turkestani Khanate. Probably Don Cuban Union is up next. Oh no. Oh no. Ireland no. Oh Dublin's down. Yep. Yeah. It's a bad day for Ireland. Oh, but they, they just pushed the uh, Italians off, so if they could do that... I, yeah, this is too much of a... landfall. They could retake Dublin, maybe they could push this bat... No. No. Ireland will not be independent in 1940. I can almost guarantee that. Spain is restoring their monarchy, good on you. They have not decided to join any faction, which they might want to join the Reichspact. Now, well, Union of South Africa ended up winning. James Herzog, really? Oh. Didn't expect Herzog to win. But, okay. There's a lot of very small wars rolling around that have me concerned. Nationalists win in South Africa. The civil war that's been ravaging South Africa has been bloody and bitter, dividing across ethnicities, political ideology, and standard ancestry. What? Ancestry. Yeah, I just read that backwards. Ancestry. The Dominionists fought to defend the Cape, while the isolated South Rhodesia protected Salisbury with every man they had, and the Afrikaners fought furiously on two fronts. As the dust settles, the Nationalists seem to have won. So, Beerclear flies proudly over Salisbury and the Cape. Eventually, Rhodesia's isolation was its downfall, and the Dominionist troops could not contain Afrikaners and their momentum. Now, it's expected for them to turn inwards with their plans for apartheid. Contain extremism? Yeah, sure. While extending a hand to those that could have broken this nation in popular, the federal government is still responsible to uphold the law, and is still bringing charges against horrible winches, robberies, and mob rule that the AFP and SPA had promoted. I can't help but feel like maybe I should have focused on this tree before elections were impending to try to impact the elections, but I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're fine. I thought they said American Greed. I'm like, yep, yep, that seems right. American Creed. Creed. The band, yes. 
The Second Melbourne Uprising Massive unrest in the Australasian Confederation has culminated in the Second Melbourne Uprising by syndicalists, mirroring the first such uprising that occurred in 1924, which was crushed by both the government and paramilitary forces. This time, however, the unpopular Australasian Guard-led government folded under pressure from public and has turned over control of the government to the Australasian Council of Trade Unions which has promised the public a restoration of order and fair deal for the Australasian working man. The revolution has rippled across the country and led to outbreaks of even more demonstrations. So far, it's unknown whether the Entente will step in to intervene. This morning, I came, I saw, and I was conquered. As everyone who would be sees for... as everyone would be, who for the first time sees this great feat of mankind, Ten years ago, the place where we are gathered was a sparse, forbidding desert, the bottom of a gloomy canyon, whose precipitous walls rose to a height of more than a thousand feet, flowed a turbulent, dangerous river. The mountains on either side of the canyon were difficult of access, with neither road nor trail, and their rocks protected by neither tree nor grass from blasting heat of the sun. The site of Boulder City was a cactus-covered waste. The transformation wrought here in these years is a 20th century marvel. Thus begins Quinton Roosevelt's speech dedicating the creation of Boulder Dam to finally being compelled today. That is why I have the right once more to congratulate you who have built Boulder Dam on behalf of the nation to say to you, well done. It's right here-ish. But actually, Vegas is here, so it's like great. <laughs> the Deutsche Ostasian government has gone into exile. Their main forces have capitulated to the Empire of Japan, who are now in control of their home area. Struggles between the Empire of Japan. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Germans are out of China. In all but name. Well, in name, but. Yeah, they're just out of China, more or less. They still have a few armies hanging around, it looks like, but. Not enough to turn the tide, though it has been enough to slow things down considerably. The Qing are pushing into Manchuria, so maybe not all hope is lost, but it's pretty rough. Meanwhile in Italy, fucking nothing changes, though there continue to be fighting along the border. Integrated support, done. Continue improving our firepower doctrine. Now the access to the M1 Thompson. Hell yeah, Tommy guns. Go ahead and switch out this with the M1 Thompson. Does the Tommy gun have uh, b -b 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 text accompanying it? No, right? Nah, not really. Alright, still 1939. These are 39 texts. These are 39 texts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, last thing I researched was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get. Wait. Interwar, fast battleship. With the second Velt Creek on the horizon and international tensions higher than ever, designers are looking to construct a new generation of ships to fight in the upcoming war. Some nations have transitioned their naval hopes to carriers, others still insist that the carrier would only provide a supplementary, supplementary role rather than replacing the primary anti capital ship of the battleship role of the battleship. These nations, typified by Germany, instead retooled their newer designs, focusing on improved armor, layouts, more effective guns and turrets, as well as improved speeds. Everything, everything come- our economy is expanding very nicely. What? What an event name. That's great. Found the University of Panama. Did you get a- Okay, you don't seem like you have any aggressive- missions in here, so I don't need to worry about you, Costa Rica. How, how, how do I feel about you? No, we seem good. We seem good. Okay, cool. Ireland has been annexed July 1939. The Union of Britain is now very British. Are you going to liberate Ireland, or... Yeah, probably not, right? Victory at the home front, you sons of bitches. Germany's definitely going to lose the Second Weltkrieg. Uh, the Irish Socialist Republic. Sean Murray, residing. Mm 
Yeah, I mean, Japan's more or less a proxy war for, for Germany, but they're losing, and losing badly. Though, it's beginning to seem like they're, they're drawing some sort of a stalemate. It's very hard to read this situation from just <laughs> the, uh, the third person perspective that we have. Let's go for the Brooklyn class. Cruisers, thanks to increased available funding, new cruisers built at the end of the interwar period and the beginning of the Second Bell Creek saw another slight growth in size. Once more, with the primary armament caliber remained, it was the exceptions. In the 7-8 inch range, their firepower increased further by adding an extra turret, erasing the number of guns in each turret. That had not been done with the previous generation. Secondary armaments were further upgraded with further dual-purpose gun, dual purpose guns, even more dedicated anti-aircraft armament often linked with improved fire controls. This generation also saw growing anticipation of radar systems on cruisers. Radar? Never heard of it. I don't... I don't know the meaning of the word. Listen up! Now let's have you drill, and let's have you drill. Yes, sir! Can I fuck around with these designs at all? I can't. I can't. How do I have to do this? No, we, we don't have nearly enough. Yeah, we don't have nearly enough toad artillery. Maybe later. Maybe later. <laughs> now I'm just building up my civilian factories. We have one, two, three, four, five, six and a half lines going at a time. That ain't bad. So the elections are coming up very closely. I think we can finish up one more focus by the time that's happened. Oh, the Fencian government has capitulated to the Qing. Wow, that's actually a game changer in certain times, but Manchuria is now under control of the Qing dynasty. And there's a Lacino coalition. We're ex containing extremism. What else do I want to do? Popular demand. Social liberals will get a bonus, all right, or good business relations. Social liberals are what? The Republicans. They are a leading party right now. I think it's just going to empower our leading party, so I'm going to hold off on that until after the election. Good business relations. A permanent solution to the business crisis has presented itself in the form of the executive order set up by the National Labor Relations Bureau. The NLRB will remedy unfair labor practices by both unions and business owners. The impartiality of the initial board, which includes union leaders, gives legitimacy to the act. No, no national focus? Eh -eh, wow. The Philippines, how, how are we feeling about the impending Japanese threat to the north? We cool with this? Yeah, I guess we're cool with this. This, I, I, part of me is cheering for Southwest Africa, Sudafist Africa, retaking the entire continent, but it's very unlikely. Former President William Gibbs McAdoo has passed away at his home in California. Who? Oh, he was elected instead of, uh, Roosevelt, okay. McAdoo, what, what a fucking name, McAdoo, is left behind a controversial legacy. Many Americans still blame him for the start of the Depression and the political crisis that came from it. While on one hand, he was and is braced for his work in regards to a number of progressive issues, notably women's suffrage, he was never able to get prohibition passed. Oh! Interesting. Something he pushed for several times in Congress to no avail. He leaves behind a divided legacy. Despite this, Floyd Olson has remarked on McAdoo's passing and offered his condolences to his family praised his work. He will be missed, I guess. I didn't know... I didn't know who the hell he was. But I guess we'll miss him. I'm frankly amazed that the Austrians haven't overrun them yet. I am absolutely amazed. So why can't you do this? Oh, this would just make Hungry Puppet of the Austrian Empire. Fair enough. Oh, and I suppose that they are, so... Well... 
I don't know why Austria can't win that war. I know why the Prince We Federation can't win this war, because they're bad at managing things. How many wars are raging on down here? Oh, a lot of these have pieced out, actually. Uh, well, not all of them, but some of them. Come on. Landing craft has finished. Not, you know, the most exciting thing, but hey, it helps. What were the researching folks? I was researching. Canada just declared war on the Australasian. All right, yeah, we'll take a look at that. Advanced armored cruisers. Progress in armored cruiser design came with a reevaluation of the role of these ships, and with adjustments in the trajectory of previous developments, while they retained mediocre armor, their predecessors, these ships changed course on the path of their guns, generally moving to reduce barrel diameter in favor of gun designs with increased velocity. Most were armed with six main guns and double or triple turrets. Most of the guns were 11 to 12 inches, or equivalent. The Australasian Union is at war with Canada. The Entente is falling apart. The which Austasian is still hiding out over here. <laughs> Undergoing the decision to tighten our bonds with Middle Africa. I uh, hate to break it to you, buddy. They don't exist anymore. Military delegation to Middle Africa. Yeah. Yeah, well, okay. Okay, about that. About that. What are we doing in here? Oh, man, there's a lot building. I feel like it was a really, really good decision to reduce the, uh, focus three times for the focus times because these all used to be 60 or 70 days which was obscene for a uh, post-civil war america you just sat around doing nothing for a decade and we're, we're going to be sitting around doing nothing for about half a decade but a little more than half a decade but still goddamn it was brutal before can i see your laws oh i can't you you have total war more economy not total war, but war economy, okay. Well, lots of people gearing up for war that are not me. The Damocles Project! German spies have recently uncovered papers of a research and development program sponsored by members of the Third International. Dubbed the Damocles Project, it's an extensive multi-nation study into the destructive power of nuclear fission, with the intent of creating bombs with a destructiveness vastly greater than anything ever known. The famous German physicist Albert Einstein had previously warned that a successful nuclear bomb might even turn entire cities into ash. German intelligence agencies have shared the information about this project with their closest allies, so naturally the whole world now knows. Some have dismissed the project as a childish fantasy, but others fear a breakthrough. A breakthrough. Gotta fear a breakthrough breakthrough. American capitalism? Oh, that's pretty good. Union ties. American capitalism. The American Republic is a capitalist nation, and through this ex executive order we can revitalize the age of progress that dissidents and populists intended to destroy. The president has invited business councils has invited business councils will be formed again at sure, whatever. Business councils will be formed again in DC, taxes will be lowered, the stock market will be made safe from terrorism. God, I should have gone with the CSA. Some of this just Blah. Gag. Malia has declared war on Abyssinia. Yep. But this is clearly the most exciting thing going on on the map right now. Brooklyn class cruisers are ready. Researching these, researching these. Modern dreadnoughts aren't yet ready. Okay, 39. None of these are ready to go. We could do this. That's not ready to go. This done. This is caught up, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah fuck it. Let's let's catch these up. I'm not even using those companies, but let's catch them up. All right, outdated stuff in production. You're not wrong. First thing I'm gonna do is cut this down and redistribute those naval factories. Interwar cruiser. Let's build one more of you. Then advanced cruiser. You know, 
Super Heavy Dreadnought versus Advanced Dreadnought. Is that... Hmm. Yeah, I should have switched over to Advanced Dreadnought, I think. Well, okay, I can do it now. Super Heavy Dreadnought is... Larger capital with ship biggest guns. 3,000... 3,020, 40, 19. 3,020, 40, 19. 3,020, 40, 19. Where? 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 Is he advanced? Dreadnought, there it is. No, they're right next to each other. God damn it. Okay. West manpower. Cheaper production cost. 20. 4019, 40, 40, 16. Okay, that's. Tour Bombard is worse. Fire range at 21, evasion is 180. 21, 180. Fire range is better on the super heavy. Naval firepower is higher on the super heavy. Uh, that's leaning me in the direction of continuing to make super heavy dreadnoughts. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep making super heavy dreadnoughts. Okay, but for the sake of. Improved armored cruiser or do, 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 advanced cruiser. We gonna make advanced cruisers. You're still going to be assigned to the UN Pacific Fleet. I am short on chromium. You will help a brother out. Thank you. Am I right in making? <laughs> Super heavy dreadnoughts. I, I maybe maybe they do cost a lot of manpower, and we are seeing a lot of manpower being put into our navy. At a certain point, there might be too much. But you know, we haven't even uh, looked into higher conscription laws. We haven't looked into any of these. Our manpower is still well over a million, so, and what do we have fielded? Half a million, yeah, just over half a million. That'll be fine. Russian Empire has declared war on Mongolia. About time. Vladimir is the third, oh, it's a Romanov. Hmm. Wait, interwar fast battleship. Done. Give me. Wait, interwar fast battleship. We'll replace the interwar fast battleships. Oh god, where to go? Okay, one of these, and then do that. Sign this to that fleet. Thank you. I guess we're going over here and doing these now. What are we doing in production? Uh, you know, we're, we're doing. We're doing. Well, uh, I don't want to go that far, but we're we're making some guns. We're just trying to ignore the realities of war. So interesting, these two have flip-flopped. The Qing are losing their southern territories, but they're holding on to Manchuria fairly well. The Australasian Union and Canada have ended their hostilities. Really? The white piece by the look of it? Huh. What the hell? Okay, alright, yep. I don't understand, but... Okay. Oh, our place in the world, so Spain is finally starting to decide who it's going to side with. The Entente could use it, the Reichspact could use it. <laughs> really, either option would uh, make people quite happy. Portugal is already in the Entente. As is Mexico, weirdly enough. Uh, peace deal between Qing and... What? The Empire of Japan White Peace? Fucking what? So... Uh, I really would love to see that event. Qing drove Japan out of... Manchuria and, I guess, Korea, so they got control of it, and they just ceded control of the former German-controlled territories in the south 
to Japan. What the hell? Okay, that's quite odd. And they even gave Taiwan or Taipei or Formosa, depending on who you are, back to China. Weird. Huh. <laughs> Deutsche Station, alright. I don't know why they just suddenly occupied all of this, but now they do. Crazy, crazy shit. The Alsace Ultimatum. After months of low-intensity skirmishes and diplomatic game-playing on the German-French border, the two behemoths are poised at the edge of potentially the most brutal conflict mankind has known since the dark days of the Weltkrieg. In a shocking escalation, the Communard government in Paris openly demanded the return of German-controlled <laughs> German, German -controlled Alsace Lorraine. Lothringen, I guess, Alsace Lothringen, seized after the War of 1871 by the victorious Reich. Flouting international norms, a single squadron of French planes flew to German airspace, dropping thousands of leaflets detailing their grievances. Much to the chagrin of the Reich's general staff, such actions are sure to outrage public opinion in Berlin, and even now, mobilization and efforts are underway. At this point, it seems unlikely that a second Weltkrieg can be avoided. Unless Germany accepts, which would be very uncharacteristic. Yep, nope, there it is. Second Belt Creek. Hopefully Germany was ready for it, unlike this whole fucking catastrophe. Otherwise, we're just gonna be a little happy bastion of <laughs> freedom from socialists over here. The Second Belt Creek. The Belt Creek? claimed the lives of countless young men from all over the world in a conflict on an industrial scale. But, it appears even that nightmare could not deter a man's lust for blood. After over 20 years of proxy warfare, diplomatic pressure, and political squabbles, the uneasy peace between Germany and France is broken down. These two great powers are now mobilizing their armies in preparation for a war the likes of which the world has never seen. New guns, new planes, ships, tanks, and even deadlier weapons still will see their first use on the battlefield, and open warfare begins once more in Europe. For the Germans and French now, there can only be one end. Victory. For destruction. Good shit. Good shit. Let's stay out of it. Public spending increase? Yeah, I'm, I'm into that. Let's do that. <laughs> no description! Okay, well, alright. I guess it's sort of self-explanatory, vaguely self-explanatory. Ah, uh, Germany's fighting a two-front war here. Let alone the uh, failing war in Asia. Abandoned by the Chinese. You all can probably stop drilling now. Yeah, you too. I have a lot of command power and army experience, I'm just not putting it to any use. I'm gonna be watching this very long front line with interest. I I feel like the Socialist Republic of Ukraine is gonna push up and win pretty handily here. Lithuania and Estonia did win their wars of independence, but strangely enough, Russia didn't annex them. That often happens. Hmm. Spain could make a huge, huge impact on this war if they joined the Reichspakt after their Our Place in the World focus. That would open up a whole second front for France and that would make a huge pressure release for Germany. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, they would probably be overwhelmed because they don't have a lot of support, but they are battle-hardened after nearly half a decade of war. They're pretty experienced. What am I doing wrong here? I switched... Yep. I switched super heavy dreadnoughts off. 
for some dumbass reason. And I'm glad I caught that before they switched over to just making more convoys. Argentina, what what do you what do you got going on now? Work to South America, sorry for autarky. Are you going to ever cause problems with me? Followed of the American Civil War. The American plan. That you Hmm. Nope, nope, I don't think you'll be a problem. Of course, we have to... Once we get the Monroe Doctrine rolling around, we can figure out if we're, if we're keen on all these people being semi-independent from our purview. So, the world's on fire. I mean, parts of Africa are still fighting each other after several years. This front line is just going to be brutal in terms of manpower. This front line is pretty brutal in terms of how many people are dying. This whole fucked up war in China is just continuing to get dragged out. Though, to Deutsche Ostasien's uh, defense, they are holding on to Singapore pretty well. Ah, uh, yeah, good. Dominion of India declaring war on the Prince Weak Federation. Are you dragging in the entire Entente, or are you just doing it on your own? It's like they're just doing it on their own. Malia and Abyssinia. I, I'm not at war. Everything's fine over here in North America. We dodged our civil war. Just building factories, hanging out. Talking about freedom, democracy, the American way of life. Pretty good. <laughs> Alright, let's queue up some military factories because it's almost time. With a lot of our factories wrapping up construction. We can switch over to pumping out a ton of airplanes and guns and artillery. I'm thinking about putting those tanks, guns, and artillery to use in the wider world. Eventually. Dope! Alright, that's going to take a hot minute to construct, but probably not as long as I feel. We, we could put down more naval dockyards, and you know, I'm kind of tempted, but we already have a big-ass navy. That's only getting bigger over time. I... I'm kind of tempted to break off the destroyers, the submarines, and the... the other ones that I'm not building more of. The carriers, the heavy carriers, etc. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. If we start running into man <laughs> manpower shortages, I'll definitely do that, but not yet. Isn't it, isn't it election day, or are we just going to wait until the end? Yeah, improve trade relations. We'll seek to improve trade relations around the world. Now, I'm, I'm curious if this gives us individual events, like Ireland does, with various trade partners. Also, Iceland is independent? What the fuck? Huh. Okay. Ooh, Canada's reading its attack on the Union of Great Britain. It would be a good time. The Irish cry out for freedom. Ah, Spain has joined the Reichspakt. With their entrance into the war, this should help alleviate stresses on Germany. Though, Germany does have the entrance... Mm -hmm. This does not bode well. Does have Dutch forces helping out where they otherwise wouldn't. And this is mostly a stable front, surprisingly. Ah, uh, no, no, uh, with the fall of Kiev. I think the Socialist Republic of Ukraine is actually losing here. Huh, okay, well, good day to be a friend of Germany's. Why did the game just grind to a halt there? That's concerning. Mongolia will lose this war. They have a lot of manpower. They have a lot of interesting bonuses, but they're fighting Russia, <laughs> and Russia's very terrifying. Iran declaring war on Azerbaijan. Fair enough. Oh shit, we're done with this. Ah, well, it's almost 1940. Let's say we get started on this 1940 test. A little early, but you know, I wouldn't mind if we take a peek. 
I'm so excited to have positive political power. It'll be so nice to fucking change from civilian economy to partial mobilization or just anything, even early mobilization. The consumer goods factory reduction that we have on this is pretty bad. Pretty bad. Consumer goods are 32% right now. That's, <laughs> that's not great. Not great. We're missing out on 60 factories. <laughs> That's four lines of constructing stuff that we're missing out on. Yeah, I'm trading four away, but that's not the big impactful thing here. Ooh, Cuba. Why do we... Mm, no, we're, we're maintaining that. Hmm. Canada, how strong is your army? Uh, ours is bigger. Yours is massive, yours is massive, yours is fucking huge. <sighs> we could build more armies. Just functionally, for us right now, that would serve no real purpose. And I'd rather be building up a stockpile to build later. To make use of later, anyway. This is disgusting, what has happened over here. Wait, Deutsche Station got this back? What a weird war. What a weird fucking war. Focusing on paratroopers and all kinds of things not involving breathing the Philippines into the fold. Not Fading Sun. Oh, you got Fading Sun? Oh, okay, so... Hold on. Rising Sun. Come on, you've you got Fading Sun. Uh, Fading Sun happens with the Japanese being pushed out of China by the, the Qing, which, or, which happened kind of, sort of, but didn't actually completely happen. Oh, Dominion of India just took all this over. All right. I'm very confused by what's going on over there. It ain't right. It ain't right at all. 1940, time to start researching some better guns we're not going to put to use for a while. Canada has declared war on the Great Union of Britain. Well, let's see if we intervene. If they intervene. I say we, I'm not getting involved at all. Trade relations. Ireland has declared war on the Irish Socialist Republic. What the hell? Gerard Gilout? I can't. Yeroy? Oh. Fun again. Is a radical Irish language scholar born in Belfast and middle class Catholic family joined the American Comrades Association. Army Comrades Association managed to work his way up to minister for the justice of Ireland as a result of his charisma, leadership, and radical ideas which attracted the interest of the ACA leader, Oyen O'Duffy. As minister for justice, he passed laws repressing syndicalism as well as anti-traveler settlement laws against the Pave community, as well as using his influence to encourage Irish language. He also maintained links with a Romanian Iron Guard, expressing sympathy for Establishing a similar regime in Ireland. To this end, he formed his own party. Itiri. I can't pronounce that. That would revive the Irish language. Banned the English language after a period of five years and established strong anti syndicalists and anti Semitic policies. Well, I was excited about you for a very brief moment. I learned more about you and now I want nothing to do with you. So, it's uh, popular democracy time, I guess. Are we gonna have an election, or are we just fucking talking about it? No, oh, it's at the end of 1940. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, fair enough. Due to influence from the progressives and senses of referendums have sharply increased following the election cycle. This, along with a wholly powerful push to reform the Electoral College, is a sign of popular democracy, something Reed and Long claimed the United States government would never approach. We got big uh, boats, big, big boats. Switch over to 
improving this. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about big bows. Advanced armor. You will replace this man. You are being replaced by this. You are being replaced by this. You are fine. You are replacing this. Yeah, because I kept you going when I showed up. Yeah, 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 yeah. It all falls into place. Recon company. Very useful. I mean, eventually useful. I will probably make use of recon companies down the road. Half track cars. Not so much. Yeah, nothing else in here. This, however, quite useful. It improved artillery upgrades. United Mexican states are at war with. <laughs> the Senequist. Reports from Lisbon confirm that Portuguese city has been captured by advancing British troops after skirmishes through the Sierra Monsanto and a rapid push towards the mouth of the Tagus River. Portuguese forces put up a stiff resistance, hoping to delay British forces for as long as possible, but were eventually beaten back. The fight for Lisbon was complicated, as Portuguese defenders intentionally destroyed Lisbon's bridges, forcing attackers to ford across large rivers to fully capture the city. Ceremony was held in the pra Praca de Comerciero. The something of commerce. The, the, whatever. Where British forces called themselves, called for the surrender of all remaining Portuguese soldiers on the hillsides. I see. Well, you know, that actually makes a pretty good place for a break. Spain's about to join the war. I'm staying the hell out of it, but we're thinking about electing a new president, maybe. That's very exciting. Uh, Russia and Mongolia are fighting. The Qing have pushed Japan out of northern China. Japan has southern China, but is still having some hard times. Germans aren't completely pushed out of East Asia, but almost entirely. India's heating up. Africa's on fire. America's just doing, doing dandy. Doing dandy. So, I'm uh, gonna... Ooh, not load game. No, that's the wrong button, Alex. Load this, my patriotic dude. Yeah, yeah. So if you're watching this on Twitch, this is it for for now. I might be streaming around 11 or midnight Pacific Standard Time tonight. I don't know if I'll be streaming this. Maybe more Rim World. Maybe Stardew Valley. Maybe this. I don't, I don't fucking know. I, I'm sporadic and inconsistent with what I'm streaming. But if you were watching this on YouTube, this is it for today. More will presumably be up tomorrow. If it's not, uh, then you know, maybe I've moved on to a new campaign or there's some tech failure or something. But more of something will be up tomorrow because God knows we're queued up until halfway through November at this point. Until tomorrow, I'm going to say toodaloo. Take care. Make sure to comment, share, like, subscribe on all the fucking things, Alexandrian Codex. Till then, bye bye